for 100 Days of Consciousness. And we, Gav and I were just getting back to you with a personal sort of uh, what we got from it and why we did it. So I'm going to start with mine. So I guess the reason we started doing this is we had done it some time ago and Gab suggested we do it online and share it with you guys. And I think the reason that for me what I started doing it for was because I know that what we think about we bring about. And whatever we focus on expands. And sometimes in our very busy lives we get focused in one direction and forget another direction. And it was just sort of like an exercise, the way that we exercise our bodies to bring our attention to all parts of consciousness that we wanted to expand. So, you know, that's, I think that's the reason why we did it. And um, I've really enjoyed it and I've enjoyed answering some of your questions and I hope the next time that we do it, um, you guys will definitely be uh, more, I think my screen is off, I'm sorry, more um, connected and, and involved and can ask us more questions. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was what consciousness was to me. And consciousness is, to me, what everything is in the world. Everything is a consciousness, from the seeds to the stars. Um, when we think about seeds, we think about expansion. And that was the other reason we did this, was because consciousness only expands. When I want you to think about like if you read a book or you watch a movie and then you don't watch it for a while and then you watch it again, you, you take away a greater understanding. So every time you exercise your consciousness, you take away greater understanding. And everything that we have on the inside of us is what we see on the outside. So the bigger the understanding we can have, the bigger changes we'll have on the outside. And I know for myself, I had wanted to make some big uh, decisions, I guess I want to say, in my life. Um, about where I wanted to live and what I wanted to do with the next part of my life. Um, my kids are growing up and leaving the nest and I wanted to make some really clear decisions about how I wanted to handle the next part of my life and where I wanted to take it. And I wanted to expand my consciousness to be able to do that and I succeeded. I've made some major decisions in my life and I feel really good about them and I'm excited about them and now I'm working on them and having them come to fruition and that was great just bringing my consciousness to what I really wanted and tuning into my heart and where I was uh, through my body through clean food like no error <laughs> virtually no error um, it really helped um, the last I think I've been on this a week and a half now as well in the midst of the hundred days of consciousness uh, aside from eating organic at the beginning I also started a cleanse um, and I've been on it for about a week and a bit now, and I feel pretty good. I'm a little tired because I've been exercising as well, so I'm a little tired, but overall I feel really good and I feel very clear. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was my rice experiment. Now, I think I'm going to be doing one more experiment on how energy moves with us, and I think Gab and I will be doing a, another um, talk together. Uh, and I want to show you how negative and positive impacts our body and how it comes from us. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was a rice experiment, which was really exciting for me to do, and I really enjoyed doing it for you guys and with you guys. I think the biggest surprise for me was I knew from what I had seen that, you know, when we put love into something, definitely you see the results, and when you put anger into something, you see the results. I always try and think of everything in my life as if I'm cooking recipe. Am I using really fresh fruits and vegetables, or am I using things that are kind of wilty and icky? Same kind of, same kind of premise. But the one that really surprised me was the apathy. Now I know that when we don't address something, um, it's not good. And I know that apathy is probably the worst thing you can feel, like in, in my opinion. Um, the, the, the rice though, when I saw the rice and I showed you guys the rice and it was like just so black and so vile and so nasty, I, that was really surprising because I watched that unfold and it didn't change, like it wasn't, it didn't reach a point and I went very extended with the experiment, it didn't reach a point where it was like, okay, they're all catching up with one another, it, it consistently stayed the same from the beginning to the end, which is showing you that, you know, consciousness is what makes things grow and expand and we are consciousness. If you think about it, we come here wired with everything, like from the time we are conceived, we are wired with everything we need to know in life for our bodies. We grow, we expand, we grow old, we eventually, you know, get to pass to the other side, but it's all consciousness. So whatever you bring your consciousness to, you can change. And I even read an article, and it may have even come up in our discussions, that there's even scientists finding that they have been able to switch DNA with the power of thought is consciousness. So when you think about it like that, you can change absolutely anything you want to change in your life. You can 
wipe the slate clean tomorrow and start with absolute directed consciousness for what you want to do. I really believe that we do come here for co-creation, so I do believe that there is a plan in place, but I believe that what we do and what we bring to the table, so to speak, makes all the difference in the world, and that is done through consciousness. So I think that's everything about why we did this and, and what I got out of it, and I do I do want to say that I, um, I feel that every time that I do this, right, it's just like exercising a muscle. If we go to the gym and we work out, we feel stronger, we feel better, we feel that we can do more. And it's the same thing with exercising your consciousness. The more you do it, the more you're going to feel you have the power to do it. Um, there were some really great books I came across that I just want to mention to everyone to Google. Um, one is by Florence Shevel Shin, and it's The Game of Life and How to Play It. I've started with that for about, I would say, about seven or eight months now. And she was a metaphysical teacher back in... I think it was 19, I want, don't quote me, but something like 1920 or something like that, and a woman. And, you know, a lot of what she was saying, and I know you guys know of Watt, Walt, Waddles, Wallace T. Waddles, and the other one was the Master Key. And they were all written around the turn of the century, and they're all essentially saying the same thing. It is thought, and it is our word. It is the power in our life to change and transform everything. And I think you would really enjoy reading them if you want to take up some reading. I know they're older books and they're not sort of the new ones, which I don't discount the new ones. They're phenomenal. But it's all really going on the same premise of how the power of us, the power of our consciousness, changes and forms our world. And I also feel too, and I truly believe this, that it starts with us. We can't wish for peace in the world if we don't have peace within ourselves. We cannot wish for happiness in the world if we don't have happiness in ourselves. We cannot wish for love in the world if we do not love ourselves. So, you know, I think it's really good to go back to those basics. Some of those books really address that very well, even though they were written then, like the one by um, Florence Scovel Shin is phenomenal. And I think for a woman in her day and age, what she said, she was very forward thinking and I think she was amazing. And when you read the book and you read the stories that of the people that she helped and, and what they were able to do by changing their consciousness at that time. It was so forward thinking and so progressive. It's amazing. It's a great book. I recommend it for anyone. And as with any book, I think you take what you want, leave what you don't, and take the best of it because that's what everything is meant to do. We're not meant to hold on to what we don't like about something. We're just meant to take what we like about it. So those are some great books. I want to say that I really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed answering any of your questions and I will continue to do so. So if you have any, email us. I Like I said, I think we're going to do one more show and then I think I have an experiment to do and I'm really not sure what Gab's doing. I know her and I were doing kind of a, a mind thing this week and I'm going to let her know what I got <laughs> and we're going to see how that goes because all consciousness is connected. We are actually essentially one. Um, the, the biggest thing that I have started to use, even though I've known it, the biggest two words that we can use is I am. Whatever you attach to that, you become. Whatever you are thinking about today, whatever is occupying your mind today, is going to be your tomorrow. So draw your consciousness to what's occupying your mind. And if you have thoughts in there that are you know, not good thoughts, or I think somebody called it stinky thinking, I want you to eradicate it. Really look at it. Is it really real? Am I... You know, am I looking at this the right way? Is there another way to look at this? Is there something I can do? I really start changing your thought pattern. Really begin to notice when you're, I always say take a sheet. And every time you have a negative thought, do that little tick thing where you go one, 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 cross. And you would be amazed at how many negative thoughts you can have in a day. Especially when it comes to ourselves. And we're damaging our own bodies when we do that. We're damaging our own spirit. We're damaging our own life path. So really, you know, if you haven't started, start now and start being aware of what you're thinking. Because whatever you are thinking today is going to be like the blueprint for your life tomorrow. And you can make any change you want to make. You just got to get into the right thought pattern, draw your consciousness to it, because whatever you think about expands. So be aware of what you're thinking about. And anyway, so that's pretty much everything I kind of wanted to say today. Uh, I really did... I really do enjoy when I do this with someone because, and when I did it with you guys, it was great knowing that, you know, every day when I got up, it was open my eyes and what am I thinking about? What do I want to bring into my life? How do I picture my life? 
where do I want to see it going? And it was every night before I went to bed, it was what I'm grateful for that I've already created, that I have in my life, that I've been gifted in my life. And, and again, all day long, same kind of thing. So I really got a hold of what I was thinking and when I was just zoning out, not thinking anything. So that's been great for me. And like I said, I, I know I've got some new directions in my life from this, however many days we're in now. I know it's not a hundred and I'm, you know, going to continue on and that's going to continue. And I just really urge you all to draw your attention to what you are thinking today because that, that really is going to make up your tomorrow. It's totally going to expand if you expand and contract if you contract. So I hope everybody expands and it's been great. And that's my personal take on 100 Days of Consciousness. Thanks for listening.